we can start making up names for new seasons. We, you know, we can obviously go through the regular spring, summer, autumn, winter, and then we can just make up new seasons. Potato. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like really should should make some soapboxes with the kids, soapbox cars with the kids. Yeah, and yeah. I mean we were we were really like scouring for parts when I was young, but today people are giving away uh, uh, trolleys on the various uh, marketplaces, so getting decent set of actually air filled wheels is easy. So you can actually make some good soapboxes. Yeah. The question I'm thinking, should I build some kind of base with wheels on for them to add on stuff to? Or should I just provide them with wheels and axles and, here, try and make something and I fail think, miserably? I think that's what you should do. Yeah. <laughs> Still with do the it. risk of them hurting themselves. Nothing more. Nothing that a plaster can't fix, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I remember one of the cars that I built, we had, um, we were building an extension to the house or my parents were, and then they had like one like rooftop plate, um, like leftover. And that became a brilliant hood on my soapbox car. But I mean, it was a angled piece of metal like this with the <laughs> edges and i mean it was it was like driving with a razor blade mounted like <laughs> half a meter in front of you so it would probably chop you in half but of course it was so badly built that it didn't get the uh, get very far mad max style yeah <laughs> they can just they can just start off making the uh, the basic ones kj they don't need a, a surround around them do they it's yeah. just a seat a basic frame and yeah some wheels at the front that you turn with your feet yeah, that's what what I, what I had yeah. when I was growing up. And I, I remember now me dreaming of of asphalt and concrete and that sort of thing. Just all the <laughs> all the roads we had were gravel. So yeah, yeah. I, I can use the 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 machine hall where when my in the summertime when my dad had all the the tractors and farm equipment out in the field. Then it was that was free, and you can. Just race around in there. <laughs> that was bloody brilliant. And doing hard turns to to make the the rubber come off the wheels, and that sort of thing. Yeah, because that's the that's the issue. I, I think they the kids are a few years away, actually having and enjoying, and also maybe being able to pull off like a soapbox, but. The problem is if they get there, if they will be interested, because I'm now looking at various web shops be because I want to buy them this like uh, the smallest kid ATVs for the summer <laughs> yeah. with the sole purpose of like, all right. And after two years, they will grow out of them or grow tired of them. <laughs> And then I have a frame with suspension and four wheels and a motor <laughs> that I can play around in. And by that time, I have a welder. So it's like uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking grind hard plumbing down the road. And of course, <laughs> yeah. all right, so if I buy it, then I, they can play with it for a few years. And then I can set up my workshop to do metalwork. And then I can have some fun myself. Strap, strap a V8 on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just put in a remote control override. When they're driving around, if they're going, if there was a cliff they, or something. They, they, they actually come with that, and of course, the electric ones is a bit more expensive. But even the the petrol ones have, you can adjust them down to walking speed, and then you can, uh, of course, remotely shut them down if anything should happen. So uh, they're a lot si safer now than they were when I was young. <laughs> What's that called? It's a it's the Barbie car race or something. What's it has a specific name, but we take one of those plastic Barbie cars that you that small kids can drive around in, and you have a proper race. Yeah, adults have a proper race <laughs> with them, and they they it becomes a dick measuring contest for engineers on how much you can modify it to actually make it go way <laughs> too fast. And I've and I've I've, I've seen those, and I didn't ever think that I would in like enter a race, but. Of course, my uncle, uh, for his grandchildren, he had like this electrical small uh, plastic uh, tractor. 
And of course, I was thinking maybe I should buy them one of those because then you could at some point just beef it up with a beefier electrical motor and it, it has a huge volume that's basically air in the front where you can put in some uh, really powerful battery packs so you can make those uh, ridiculously fast. <laughs> <laughs> Want a camera update? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Always. Yep. It's probably the last one. Because the camera is Before shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of... Well, I'm glad you said it. <laughs> I <just> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I made up my mind at the weekend. That is the last video being filmed on that. It's shit. And then uh, Homemade Marco sent me a comment and said, I don't know why you keep complaining about your camera. Everything in the background's in focus. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Marco. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that might be true. <laughs> yeah, there's so a, there's been some focusing issues and some graininess, and I'm, uh, yeah. I'm looking at the footage. I mean, it's it's not that you don't have enough lighting, so there there is something on that camera that, and I can't really put my finger on it if there's a uh, a quick fix in uh, the settings either. So. The, the settings are really basic. There's really not a lot you can do with it apart yeah. from make things worse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but occasionally it, it throws a little curveball and will do a really nice clear shot. And I think, well, how did I achieve that? I don't know. <laughs> I feel there might be some gremlins in there just changing the settings really nearly. <laughs> that wouldn't no, surprise me. Yeah. I'm going back to the phone and I'm quite excited to get back to it as well. Yeah. yeah. The, the the phone is actually a decent alternative, and the last couple of days I've actually filmed with my camera in manual mode, uh, ref the discussion we had uh, last week. And I mean, the footage has become even better, but now I'm spending even more time setting it up. And of course, yeah. it's three settings that I need to adjust and. This camera is basically built for vlogging, so there is no designated button for all those three functions. So it's it's a bit mm. fiddly to to set everything. Um, so yeah, so um, that's so the this... one thing I'm going to check for my next camera. Uh, when, not that I'm planning on buying a new one, but at some point I'm probably going to drop it in the floor and break it. So that's that's uh, a. <laughs> So th this camera that you're using now that you're doing all the manual settings on, is this the one that you've been using for quite some time? Yeah. And has something just gone wrong with it that all of a sudden you need to start doing the manual settings? Or No, I, I haven't seen it on some of the footage, but uh, I mean, in my workshop with good lighting, it doesn't need to adjust. But uh, when I was filming um, the intro for the table... Um, down here in my basement and the TV screen was on in the background and of course it, it keeps switching uh, the background image and that ah. changes uh, the lighting in the room it's it's not much but it, it's enough for the camera to pick up and then try to yeah. adjust um, and that was a pain in the ass and I've seen that at a few angles in the workshop as well but I haven't cared much but uh, now that i started to notice it i cannot unsee it and that's a that's a issue yeah. and that's more important when you do long shots as well yeah i mean i i edit mine so heavily that it's three seconds here and there you can always get out <laughs> from a clip but a long one that's hard to fix yeah when it starts messing about but I mean, it's 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 good for learning to use the camera. But of course, they should have probably the model a bit higher up, where you actually have like a turning knob for all those settings. Yeah. But I mean, you ha you have to draw the line somewhere, and it's uh. I'm not Steven Spielberg, so I mean. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the question: Are you a, a videographer or are you a are you a maker? So I mean, it's the, what's the important part. Yeah. It was really interesting, though. I, I was looking, of course, uh, trying to figure out these settings. So as I was uh, looking up uh, various uh, photo channels on YouTube. And this one channel said that 
the last couple of years he just stopped doing camera reviews because even the simplest cameras now are so good that they're basically all good enough. Well, yeah, you're shaking your head. <laughs> guy, but... As long as it's not shitty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and then he said, it's it's basically up to you and how you use it. So he's focusing on that because uh, even the the basic standards of the cameras that he's been like using it's it's more than good enough the the restriction is basically in the user so you need to focus on that so and that's basically also the same with the cameras in the phones they are so good now that it you i mean there are settings with low lighting and so on that you there is a limitation of how big of a objective you can actually cram into your phone but but still with the software side they can correct for a lot of it and even phone cameras are now so good that i mean you just have to focus on using it i mean uh, it's not a tool that is holding you back anymore yeah as long as you don't buy the cheapest budget version you always get um, i've never seen a problem with your shots kj your your images are always really nice and clear you're on the google pixel aren't you yeah um yeah. and that works uh works fine for me so it's it's good enough for me yeah and do you just use the the sound uh, through the phone microphone or do you have a separate microphone uh it's the it's the phone microphone because i haven't bothered actually getting <laughs> a proper yeah. one yeah that, it's, it always sounds pretty decent on your on your videos that's for sure yeah i, I usually use uh, uh when i'm far away from the camera or there's something noisy i have a little Lavier microphone, but it's uh, connected with a uh, with a cord uh, to a to a separate phone instead, where I record the audio on oh, both God. both of them and sync them up and just uh, use the other one instead. That sounds challenging. No, nah, it's not so bad. Yeah. Oh, and and sometimes you can get uh, some nicer uh, if you just keep both of the audio. <laughs> I don't remember which video it was recently I did where I actually kept both the audio from both the phones at the same time in the intro because oh, it wow. sounded better that way. <laughs> Some sort of crazy stereo setting. No, it was it just they just uh, add different parts so it you yeah. got a, a rounder, nicer feel if that's something you can say about <laughs> audio. I don't know. <laughs> so that was another thing I had with the with the crappy camera was uh, syncing the audio wasn't always syncing when I was filming as well. well that's which was problematic. Yeah, yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah, but I, have you gotten the new? Or did you did order the new microphones, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have, I had difficulty syncing the audio through those as well. Yeah, I got there in the end, but um, yeah, the, the first couple of times I tried it, it's like I was in some old kung fu movie. <laughs> so if uh, any one of our listeners out there uh, want a new camera you can talk to glenn and he can tell and he can tell you which one not to buy <laughs> i thought we'd give it away as the, on the next challenge we do <laughs> yeah that would be cool you have the original packaging right so you can put it back yeah. in and i like oh we're doing a giveaway <laughs> i think I, I spray it gold and put it in a frame i think <laughs> some sort of weird trophy <laughs> Yeah. But then again, I mean, how uh, you could give it a proper send off. I mean, uh, how much uh, grinding footage can you film before it catches fire and, or something like that? <laughs> how close can you grind it? <laughs> well, maybe if I just edge it slowly towards the belt sander and just get it closer and closer and just <laughs> gradually sander way up to the lens. <laughs> you can you can start by grinding the lens and of course filming while you're doing and like how how yeah. long can you film before it all goes yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah now we are talking that yeah, sounds like fun <laughs> well yeah. luckily you did not lose a lot of money on it i mean it was no. it was more reasonably time. priced yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah more time and more quality i think i think i'll um I might have it just set up in the corner of the workshop on projects on the time lapse, just as a sort of extra angle, if you like. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. 
that's that reminds me i, I actually uh, uh, in my mind i did a hover uh, for the latest project i realized when i started editing that i actually filmed some parts in slow motion <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, luckily happens. it wasn't that that much slow motion, so I could speed it up uh, and have have it been usable. Yeah. <laughs> but like, why isn't there any audio in this, and why am I moving so slowly? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, now I see. Because that was the really crappy thing about the footage that I did. I mean, there wasn't a problem speeding them up, but the audio was lost because it didn't record that, and then, of course, then the point of them were. <laughs> like totally lost so yeah luckily I didn't need the audio for those clips but I still felt stupid so Ron, how are you coping with not getting a video out, video out weekly this year are you, are you suffering from it or? yeah I'm suffering badly but um, yeah. I'm gonna I mean you were sick at that time so yeah I, I think mean, it stopped before then excuses before, excuses it? yeah <laughs> <laughs> I started the year off good. I think I had the three videos in the two first weeks, but yeah. Um, and then I realized I, I'm now made my forty fifth movie. So like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna be able to do a hundred videos this year. But of course, that's a <laughs> that's a milestone. <laughs> of course, I I don't count shorts. <laughs> Yeah, now I've got loads of videos on my channels if you count the shorts. There are not so many if you do. Uh, <laughs> and, and the problem is that, the, I mean, all the project that I now have lined up is, they are labor intensive, so they are going to take more time uh, to get done right. So yeah, I don't think I'll be able to keep the frequency up unless I uh, suddenly decide to do the the live thing of course then i can knock some videos out every week <laughs> <laughs> they don't seem to do great views do they those live videos but the, for some reason they have some weird effect on getting you more subscribers i don't understand it myself but it does seem to it does seem to work for people doesn't it no and if i'm gonna i don't I mean, when I get a notification that someone is going live, it, it never suits me. I, I can't start watch then, of course. And then oh. it will be uploaded so I can watch it later. But then I would much rather watch a movie that someone has cut down to size yeah. and actually edited. Because looking yeah. at the live video mm -hmm. three weeks later, it's like... I mean, a live video should be watched live because that's what it is. But yeah. I'm never around to do that, so yeah. No, they're only the ones that actually have a a set weekday and time. You know that Monday is at eight o'clock or something like that. Then you can actually schedule schedule it in. But yeah, I I use some of the lives as I mean a, a workshop companion. It's like a podcast that you don't have to listen to that closely. Yeah, when you yeah. just want something in the background, uh, <laughs> then I can listen back to them. But yeah, it's I, just, I, I u't uh, never, never tell them that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I told Mr. Mello that um, when the first live I ever watched of his, I was in the working on the loo at the time, plastering. <laughs> Better than really being on the loo. <laughs> plastering. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, let's recycle those old jokes from the toilet days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the toilet area of the. Was that in season season zero or season one? I don't know. You confused me with those seasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Season... Get, I didn't get that uh, change there. I mean, no. why? <laughs> but I mean, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, it feels like it. <laughs> a season suggests a break between between them, doesn't it? Does it have to be? <laughs> well, apparently not. <laughs> we can do we can do four episodes. I mean, two long ones and two half pints, and that's a season. Then we can, then we are at season uh, <laughs> like seven or eight already. That's a decent. Yeah, as long as you find some kind of structure to it, then it's. Yeah. I, mean, I think we can start I mean, making up names for new seasons. We, you know, we can obviously go through the regular spring, summer, autumn, winter, and then we can just 
make up new seasons. Potato. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that, that was that was a good idea actually because I was thinking like we could do a school so we can do semesters, but yeah, seasons. I mean, it's called seasons, and we have four seasons, so we should split it into four. Four seasons every year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, that's uh. But then it gets confusing because you can buy some camping gear, which claims to be five season. What the fuck is the fifth season? That's in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I suspected. <laughs> that was the main worry. Sounds like a resort. <laughs> the five seasons. Well, in, in. in my mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's somewhere, right. somewhere you'd like to visit, Avard. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a big empty sure space most of the time yeah. <laughs> well they, it's nice to have room <laughs> to wander <laughs> you did say you like walking <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a nice message on one of my YouTube videos today uh, not today, the other day and it was uh, really enjoyed the video nice project and loving the podcast it keeps me entertained when I'm stuck in traffic Nice. <laughs> yeah. So that was from Fat Hog Woodworking. So you can have a shout out, mate. Mm. Thanks for listening. Yeah, I'd say uh, that's a nice feedback. That's uh Yeah. Puts a smile on our old podcast host, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Helping with the road rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did get another nice comment yesterday saying the end of the um light box. Um, video was very sweet and I am definitely the overlord of marketing so it's definitely from a listener <laughs> but I have got suspicions it's from uh, KJ's wife <laughs> <laughs> well that, that doesn't really sound like her because she never interacts with anyone online yeah I know but this, <laughs> but is, perhaps me. this is, is me KJ yeah yeah you're special <laughs> you're special <laughs> oh, special all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> She did send me a comment on Instagram, actually, uh, regards the um, the Lingonberry comments we made on the last podcast. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for all those that are interested, cranberries are in the same genus as well <laughs> that she pointed out to me. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, that's weird. I was actually thinking of that in the car the other day. Mm. Lingonberry is <laughs> actually in the family of blueberries. Who would have thought? <laughs> I did send her a proper nerdy comment back, but I'll, I'll not bore you with that on the podcast. <laughs> if you want your own nerdy comment, uh, yeah. just message Glenn directly instead. Yeah, the, the Latin tongue lover. <laughs> uh. Latin name of the day. You can get this at service that Glenn <laughs> offers for ten ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if it's paying, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and early for the introduction to the main episode, played your uh, the introduction of your video of art. <laughs> <laughs> that would have made a great introduction. Still might put it up there. Yeah. I can't find a decent hook. <laughs> Oh, I was pleased with that when I found the uh, the free audio clip for the um, uh, for the like the news uh, segment, and then of course I was looking at various backgrounds, but uh, the, the the decent ones uh, wanted money, so I just went with the blue background. But it uh, turned out great. Yeah, <laughs> I liked you flashing up uh, headlines as well, actually. Yeah, um, that, Vard I... still hasn't hit four K on subscribers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You had to go back and rewatch those because yeah. there's a lot happening. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the thing. I kept them intentionally short, so you have to pause or go back. So, uh, but yeah, no, I've been steadily losing subscribers again. So it's uh, but the number it, it's it's a. Um, it varies between six to seven plus and minus. So I, I'm thinking that I'm just losing people that are not interested, but then the ones I'm gaining are the ones that are really into the stuff. So I'm, I'm thinking that I'm just uh, compressing uh, or uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, yeah, topping up the 
the, the quality of the subscribers. I mean, <laughs> those who are there now, they're in it for the <laughs> long run. Yeah, that's what you hope, at least. Yeah. So it's not just a bot farm. I forgot to mention that um, I managed I managed to pull off the Valentine's Day project. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. So, so built something and edited it and got a video out in the same day. Yeah. And uh, Shell was really pleased with it. You know, it's the first time she's ever got a gift over social media before. <laughs> 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 but it was the only ever video I've had that showed up as minus one subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's well, that was a bit harsh. <laughs> yeah. How, how did it feel to have that quick turnaround of a video from start to finish, so to say? Do you know what was really nice? If I, if I think if you uh, you could literally do one a day at that sort of rate, you know, it's really comfortably. So that was about six hours from the start of the project to getting that video and a short out as well. And, yeah, the I think short, I had... and the short got me a couple of subscribers and did a bit better on views. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had one of those videos where I just started and two hours later I was done with the project. If I, what? Have I done already? What? <laughs> did, did, I'm supposed to linger on this for weeks and think and <laughs> ponder. And I thought the knife was going to go like that for me, to be honest with you, when I first started it. Yeah. Until yeah. I started thinking of ways of complicating it. Well, I think we touched upon it earlier, and I, I, I still find myself thinking that if, if I were to be given the ability of doing this full time, and then of course being a lazy person, always trying to find the shortest way of doing something, mm-hmm. then how many videos could you produce a week? Because if I get like four hours of effective time in my workshop, I can knock a lot of things out. And then, of course, mm. four hours, you have a lunch, you upload the clips, and then, of course, if you lower your standards to the the live uh, feel uh, editing part, and then you just publish, I mean, realistically, one every second day. But as you said, do you ever go out of ideas? And you would probably then probably borderline to that sometimes that you're really out of ideas for something to do because yeah you are at a pace that you can't really accumulate ideas so at some point you will probably just like i need an idea now and well, so, uh, sometimes you just have to start start actually doing something to come up with the idea when um with that project the valentine's day project that i did last week i actually didn't know what to make from the log and I just took it to the bandsaw and started cutting bits off it. And I think I'd cut four pieces off it before I decided what I was making, before I had an idea. <laughs> That's yeah. one way to do it. But sometimes think, you just got to get the tools in your hand. Yeah. Oh, it's, I it's, think the hard part with that is, uh, is ordering stuff, uh, materials and that sort of thing. Yeah. Because if you have that four-hour time slot every day, then you have to have all the materials on hand and then you have to plan stuff for weeks in advance to to get all the materials that's true very very so true. that that would be the hard part i think with that time schedule yeah i think um, did... i think if you could i think and i might do this as well not on the next project but um, every once in a while just throw in a project where that i can i know i can make and uh, the stuff i've got already so i don't have to buy anything for it yeah I think that'd be quite a nice way of doing things, just to throw one of those in every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, more of a challenge for yourself. Like, uh, I'm going to build something, but I'm only going to use what is in the scrap wood pile or something. Yeah. We've all, we've all got workshops full of crap, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Stuff that we, we don't we don't want to throw away because we know it's going to be useful one day. You might as well make <laughs> use of it that day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I, I at least tend to accumulate stuff for, I'm going to do this project, so I'll buy these things. And then I have them sitting on a shelf for years because I never get around to it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of buying a few things that I've not used. Gone off the idea of making that now. I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have actually one project that I can use some scrap wood because um, I got the question here the other day at work uh, because they were... Uh, 
we're going to build a very simple prototype to show a principle. And I'm like, uh, you have tools, right? Can you just bring a drill and uh, some drill bits and so on uh, tomorrow? And yeah, I could. And then I didn't have a proper, like, a box to carry the tools in. Uh, so I just went by the, the local hardware store and I got uh, like this cheap uh, plastic uh, handle with a couple of compartments uh, because I thought that would be nice anyway because I I have a shopping basket that I use if I'm doing something in the garden where I put all the tools in and it's, it's not very purpose-built. And It is my long-term plan to actually build uh, a kind of a holder for the call it everyday carry the tools that you use the most because I can that can be on top of a work table in the workshop as well because it's just the tools I use every day but then I can just yank that with me and go outside and that's one of the projects that you you can over plan it and I I have been doing for years (laughs) and I just realized um, you over planning no (laughs) And at some point, you just need to build something and start using it to understand what it is to actually you need and what you don't need. And I realized that when I got this plastic box, I instantly saw, all right, I don't need this, uh, but I need this. So it's going to like be the prototype. And then I have to build something like the, the second iteration. And that's going to be from some scrap plywood I have lying around before I finally find the the proper one. And what really annoys me, um, of course, it's a single handle in the middle. So if you have like the heavy drill at one side and you lift it up, you have to twist your wrist to keep it level so things doesn't fall out. And that got me thinking, if I have a double bottom there and then I have two like guide rails on these uh, small uh, 3D printers and I have an Arduino and I have a weight that can shift... (laughs) And I have sensors in every four corners. So whatever weight you put in, it okay, it's a bit heavier on this side. So I offset the counterweight so that when I lift it up, it is actually evenly balanced. And of course, that is ridiculously complicated for uh, like an everyday carriage. But I think it's going to be a good project. Yeah. So the, um, the name for the handle and the tray thing is called a caddy. Caddy? So call it. Yeah, so you could call the video the everyday caddy. Nice. <laughs> and then, of course, I can Google caddy. And, of course, mm. uh, put a minus on Volkswagen unless you're going to get a lot of... Uh... <laughs> but then again, I would actually like a caddy, the car that is, yeah. You should use the batteries as the weight to move around. I mean, a Bosch battery, so you have an extra spare battery with you all, at all times. Yeah, because you need that battery to power the uh, the thing anyway, so yeah. Yeah, so it's an uh, emergency extra battery. That's ne- always nice to have. 